Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. In studio, beautiful faces being shown everywhere. It's so good to be back. We're so thrilled to be back in studio post-quarantine. It's very exciting. We were really getting cooked up in our houses, and it is just fabulous to be out with the people, with Theo, with the fresh air, corporate... It- environment. Here's the thing. It's fabulous to be here, but you really touched on something quite important. It's fabulous to be here with Theo. I have not seen Theo in two weeks and honestly, like my heart was hurting. It was aching for him. We had such a beautiful reunion this morning. It was stunning. He's just like the most sweetest, most perfect man. And I'm so blessed, honored and happy to be here back working yeah. with him like it's such an honor to work with you know your heroes and people you really respect and that's how I feel about working with Theo like, no I I totally hear that I also think you know at some point we were taking this place for granted I agree I mean what is weird is that we've been gone for two weeks mm-hmm. and it really feels like two months oh no and like the box is piled up outside of our door like you think we're the most famous bloggers ever no like it really felt feels like first day back at school but like it was summer just, break it was just a two-week Q. No, it was just a two-week queue. Thank you guys for keeping up with us. Oh my God, I like forgot how to talk. Thank you guys for keeping up with us on the podcast. We hope you enjoyed those episodes, but I'm not going to lie. I'm... I'm pretty excited to be back on camera looking those fabulous. Were, those were some good episodes, though, like the Extremely Hasty Flush. Mm-hmm. Imagine if like you're someone who doesn't watch, doesn't listen as a podcast, like only watches on YouTube. Like You don't know what happened in the Connecticut rest stop bathroom, and that's for you to find out. Yeah, that's for us to know and you to find out. Yeah, it was crazy. Just beware of those Madison County restroom bathrooms. Yes. That's all I'll say. That's all, we'll leave it at that. And you know what? If you rent a car, get the insurance. It's worth it. Um, if you rent a car and get the insurance, like there are some things that probably even insurance can't cover. Yeah, but some things that it does, like the towing, which is very expensive. D- did it cover the mm-hmm. towing? Yeah, we're figuring out what happened we're still there. We're, yeah, we're still working out the logistics <laughs> with the rental car company, but c'est la vie. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. And it's like, once those keys went down the toilet, there was nothing to be done. No, and Except all- pay the toll. Yeah, and at the, at the same time, like, once those keys went down the toilet, like, it wasn't my problem anymore, you know? <laughs> like, the rental car, that's probably the, actually the beauty of having a rental car. If it was my own car, it kind of would have been more annoying. Like, yeah, we you would have had to follow the tow. You might even have to, like, sleep at a local hotel in order to take it back in the morning. I just feel like you were done driving for the day. You were like, I'm going to flush these keys down the toilet. Can I just tell you how not <laughs> subconscious it was? Like, we were making such amazing time. Like, we had left on time. I was literally <laughs> speeding. We stopped in Madison for, like, we had done, like, almost 100 miles. I was like, we're going to get home so early. And I was really ready to just like impress everyone with my driving skills and my timing skills and my speed skills and my logistics skills. And then, you know, as they say, man plans, God laughs. We were detoured and completely devastated. Man plans, Theo laughs. Hi, sweets. I'm just glad Theo wasn't there to see his mom in this like really low point in his life. To see her mom go like this. Yeah, I'm really, I don't know. I think he really would have been disappointed in me. I, I feel that. I do. It's going to be so hard for me to focus today because, like, the sweetest, purest man alive is here. And I just, like, want to talk to him. I want to catch up with him. Like, we, I t- told you guys in the podcast episodes, I've been FaceTiming you. And, like, I'd be like, where's Theo? Where's mm-hmm. Theo? And I just feel like we weren't really connecting virtually because he's more of an IRL kind of it's guy. It's hard. So I just, like, want to make up for lost time. No, I. Uh, sweet men. He was talking to me, you know, keep me up, actually. Really chatty last night. Oh. Um, just kind of saying how he felt, you know, this distance between him and everyone in the family. Um, but kind of specifically like pointed you out um, just that you like really haven't been there for him and he's kind of been going through some stuff and he just kind of he needed you I know well if he picked up his phone maybe we could have had a conversation about it but oh, I love him so much no, no no I love him so much and that's what the show is missing so that's the thing about the podcast episodes they were good but you don't get Theo they were good but they weren't great. No, no, they were not. But you know what will be great? Hopefully, fingers crossed, today's episode. <laughs> fingers crossed. One never knows. But I have a good feeling about it. I'm feeling energized. I definitely feel like when we take a break. Oh, it's, it all comes back full force and we're like on another level of excitement when we come back. Was that not what you were going to say? No. What I was going to say was I feel like when we don't do video episodes or when we don't do any episodes at all and we like get back in the studio for the first day, for like the first five minutes, I definitely feel weird. Like in the beginning of this episode, if you watch me, like my mouth is moving weird. I, do, I need like a, a two minute like adjustment period. So hopefully it doesn't throw me off because I really plan on delivering the stories in such a fabulous way today. Like I went to bed last night and I was like, 
we're gonna be fabulous tomorrow. Yeah, and I think we're here. And here we are. Being fabulous, question mark? Question mark. <laughs> it's to be seen. Excla it should be an exclamation point, but it's definitely a question mark, well, but we'll see. It's just to be seen, like the episode's ahead of us and we don't know, anything could happen. No, it's like, it's like the draft possibilities. Day. It's like draft day. The possibilities for what's about to happen are just completely endless and it's, and it's up to us. Isn't that exciting? It is, it's us and the little man who, who took his spot center stage He's so symmetrical and like it's a beautiful thing to behold. You just love to see it. Yeah, you really do. Um, so I saw a rumor yesterday that you started a place to call home. Um, yeah, I would say started like very loosely. I did pay for the seven day free trial for Acorn and excuse me, I watched two episodes of the first season. It's um it's good. It definitely has like that hallmark vibe that I know you said wears off. It doesn't bother me. It's just like I'm I'm in such a weird place in my life, in such a different place than I was than I was in maybe a week ago. I'm just I have Mad Men behind me now, and do you say Mad Men? Yeah, I have Mad Men behind me now, and it's just like I don't know if I'm in a place where I'm ready to commit full time to another seven seasons of a show. I'm still very much in like the Mad Men hangover, and I don't want to make the mistake by moving too hastily. I understand that you need an amuse bouche. You really do, like an Emily in Paris. Yeah, she is such a bouche. <laughs> She's such an amusing bouche. Um, I understand that two episodes into a place to call home is like not where you want to be because no, but it's also it's better than I expected. Even for everyone said give it like four episodes, it's better than I expected. Even two episodes in, it's good. Okay, but it gets like better. It's like as if just the budget just like blew up after oh. a few episodes, and it's like the way that they are on the ship, like that ship gave me such hallmark vibes. Well, because the ship like grand dining room was literally a rec center. Yeah, so that sort of thing stops, and like it, it becomes extremely high end. And so I'm just excited for you. I saw a lot of toasters are on there, a place to call home journey. And I just want to say, enjoy these days, you guys, because you can't get them back. Everyone's on their APTCH journey. No, I know. It's, it's a beautiful thing to behold. I, I needed an amuse-bouche, and it took me like days to even get to the bouche mm -hmm. part. So yesterday, I read uh, the new Ellen Hildebrand book, Trouble in Paradise. It's the third of a series. And I'm glad I finished it out. And the third one was probably the best one. But like, the series just didn't do it for me. But it definitely amused my bouche. See... <laughs> different things serve different purposes. Yeah. And some books aren't meant to change your life, like no. Eliza starts a rumor. Some of them are just meant to amuse your bush until you're on to the next one. And I think that's totally fine. And I think the next one, I'm trying to just like prioritize all of these things that I have on my plate. And I think that the next one is going to be Mariah Carey's memoir. Yes, I started it. You know what? It's really... Um, like difficult to get through it's so dense like I've really only been reading like 10 pages at a time but that's also just me but I wonder if you'll have the same experience I wonder if I'll, have, if I'll it's heavy and the writer is really going for it with these metaphors like it doesn't I I would totally understand and respect when people work with writers for their memoirs but at some point it needs to sound like them and I actually have met Mariah Carey and had dinner with her and I just have to say this is not how she talks okay like I just can't really imagine it doesn't the book isn't, re it's in the first person, but it's not reading to me as Mariah's voice. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. the word, it's so written not like her. But it's still very good. Well, I'm going to start it and I'll, I wonder if I'll have the same critique. Yeah, well, I put it in your brain, so You did maybe. put it in my brain, which I hate. I you know. get in my brain. I know. Uh, and aside from that, we're going to recap Real Housewives of Potomac. I feel like there was one other thing that I watched. Yes, there was that I wanted to talk about. Wild Wild Country. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm. So it's a fascinating story, like really a crazy fucking story. True like, story? True story. Like really not to be believed except for the fact that it's true. It's a documentary, six parts. And the documentary happens to make it extremely uninteresting and they're dragging out of this story like I've watched four episodes and so many people told me to watch it they're like you're gonna love it this is fucking nuts and like I can't, I have to watch two more episodes which I will but like documentaries they really get so ahead of themselves with like a six-parter when it's uh -huh. like give me a two-parter and you'll have me uh, hanging on your every word yeah that's me right now in the vow I'm on episode eight and they still haven't made any arrests it's such torture and it. It's just like, honestly, like I'm starting to like resent the people because like, just get on with it. Yeah. It's, and it's like, they had a meeting with the attorney general, literally getting the meeting and preparing for the meeting was a whole episode, an hour. They didn't even have the meeting in the episode yet. Like it was the start of okay, the next that's, episode. That's even worse than what I'm experiencing. It's insane. Like, and honestly, I just want to see like the sentencing. I think that's the most interesting. And like when the cult really starts to fall apart, like who doesn't want to see that? We haven't even gotten there yet. And I'm eight episodes in an hour each. It's crazy. Yeah. No, that... That's crazy. There should, you would think at this point, like they would know, but I, I guess 
it benefits them to have more episodes and more ads, like more time you spend watching. But like, at what cost? Yeah, well, it's like Tiger King. And in my, before Tiger King became like a cultural like meme, um, I actually had some very harsh critiques of the documentary because while I thought it was good and funny, it was way too long, seven episodes about a tiger. Like, it's just so silly. Um, but apparently nobody else shared with me because it became like the biggest thing ever. Yeah, or like if there's a lull in the middle but the end is popping off, like you forget about the lull because by the end you're just like want to talk about it and yeah. you can't believe this crazy story. Also really quickly, um, I put up on my Instagram story, like can anyone guess what we were going to be for Halloween? And so many people were guessing Carol Baskin and um, what's his name? Joe Exotic. Yeah, and I just like, I want to make you guys uh, make it abundantly clear, like we would never do that to you. We would never do that. And it's you unoriginal. Guys, you know that I didn't even watch it, so I wouldn't know how to even do that yeah it's also just like so unoriginal like that's not who I am you no, know no, no, no. and that's not who I want to be no not at all that's not what I want to like be displayed of of my brand and that's how I'm never gonna be you can take me out of the country it feels so good to be back singing together i know on beat and i still have like a little sticky shoes in me Ooh. i feel my sticky sticky shoes uh, honestly so. <laughs> never doesn't like fail it never fails to like wait yeah no wait it never fails to make me feel sexy. Oh, Is that yeah. the right verbiage? Yes, that's the right verbiage. English is hard. We know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. If you were interested. Cool, cool, cool. Um, did you want to dive in? <clears throat> I'm not sure. See, like, are you ready? I only will if you want to. Well, I brought it up, so yeah. So you want to. That's you saying sure. like, you're taking responsibility for this dive. Yes, I'll take responsibility, <laughs> happily. Okay, so without further ado, Claudia says that it's time. So it's time. It is time. I say she said it. Pa -pa -ma. For, the, for the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And it's like, I feel like I don't even need to say this. Like, today's ad almost goes without saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, today's episode obviously is brought to you by Bruce. Oh, obviously. Look at us. Do, but do you get that? Like, it's just so, it's so obvious. It's so obvious. You know? Um, think about how many times you've brushed your teeth in your lifetime. You probably do it without thinking at this point. So if you're looking for a dentist quality clean at home, don't brush your teeth. Bruce them. Bruce is the electric toothbrush we've been talking about for weeks. Jackie and I both have one. We both got one in the millennial pink. It's kind of like the same color as my sweater. It is such a game changer. It's so sleek looking. It's so chic looking with the little outlet and the little pad and it's like magnetic. It's everything of the sort. It comes in a few different colors, but the pink is super cute. Um, and then like, you know, scientifically brushing your teeth electronically is so much better for you because the Bruch, um brush delivers premier sonic wave technology and it doesn't have the markups of big electric toothbrushes. So some electric toothbrushes are super, super expensive, um, but this Bruch one looks really expensive, but it's very reasonably priced. Many electric toothbrushes are barely a step up for manuals. Some do a good job, but they cost $200 and up. Bruch is just letting you have everything that you need for a reasonable price. And for that, we have no choice but to stand and be incredibly grateful. Um, and also, I have this thing called, like, RDH, which some of the side effects is bad breath. So I, I like, actually have to brush my teeth more often that, than other people. And with a premier toothbrush. And the doctor said, it's brush or nothing at all. Yeah. That's what Dr. Pachaman said. He was like, you better get a toothbrush. Um, so if you are looking to elevate your teeth, your breath, your brushing experience, get a brush. Stop wasting your time dilly-dallying around with these toothbrushes that just aren't cutting it and if you want to get 15 percent off your brush use promo code toast at brush.com that's b-r-u-u-s-h.com you can try it 90 days risk-free and get a two-year warranty at brush.com b-r-u-u-s-h.com promo code toast check it out and just thank us later that's really all we have to say yeah um it's dr Fachemin approved so you know it's the best in the biz yeah four out of five dr Fachemin's recommend yeah and the fifth one has bad fucking breath <laughs> sign on <laughs> Thank us later. Sign on. Get your mask breath a little better. Oh, yeah. Okay, first story. Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott are sparking romance rumors after she st shares steamy photo shoot pics. Yes, I'm not going to lie. This did throw me off quite a bit. Did it? Yeah. For me, it tracks. But everyone is like, 
you know, are they or aren't they because they're sparking reconciliation rumors after they cozied up for a sexy photo shoot. They shared pictures via Instagram on Saturday of Kylie and Travis Scott posing next to a wall. Jenna rocked a Givenchy outfit, which included a sheer dress, crop brown jacket, and yellow heels. The highest in the room rapper, who wore a beige t-shirt and black leather pants, lifted his shirt to show off his abs in one photo. What do you think? Um, I haven't like been able to keep up with the Kardashians literally on this story. It's like I never know if they're together or not together, and I feel like that's how they want it. Like they don't even know if they're together. Um, and obviously for Stormy's sake, like I ship and I want them together, but I also want Kylie to be in like the best possible, most healthy relationship. I don't know if this is it, but if it is like, so here for it. Yeah. I also feel like they spend so much time together and I feel like on Kylie's stories, like it's clear when she's with Travis, even if they're not posting like steamy photos together. So I just feel like their family period. And this right. picture like doesn't, didn't even like alert me if they're together or not. I feel like they're always spending time together yes and she got this like whole Givenchy outfit because that was like part of a collab like, no what I think um like the new Givenchy designer first collection yeah first collection and he sent out looks to everyone important people and they posted them yeah this photo doesn't really mean anything they could have just been in me, the house together trying on clothes because that's like what famous rich people do to me it meant ad for Givenchy yeah completely um yeah, and everyone, like, really being, like, cozying up with Travis Scott. It's, like, literally, they have an arm around each other. That's how you take a picture, E! News. <laughs> like, have you ever, like, taken a picture with anyone? You just, like, put your arm around them. It's, like, really not. People need to, like, relax a little bit. But it was just interesting that they were together. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, everyone, like, wishful thinking. Of course. How can we blame them? I just feel like they know what's best for them. Yeah, and I'm just trusting and believing in them to do what's best for their family yeah and I don't really feel like I can you know sit here and, and speculate because I don't know what's best for their family no but we just all saw the photo so yeah. we're talking about a photo we're just we're just speculating we're just speculating even though I just said we wouldn't we're just art yeah no we're just hoping we shouldn't pray did you see Kylie uploaded a new YouTube video to her channel Chris Jenner does my makeup yes um so it I watched it on my TV last night and then I went down like a little bit of a rabbit hole with Kylie's um YouTube videos and I really wish she would have do them more often like I know it's not like the most important thing but I feel like she has the time and like it would just really make my life great she has 10 million YouTube subscribers like why yeah. not it'd be great promotion for Kylie Cosmetics and just good ad revenue but the video last night was super funny and it really reminded me of her um app and she used to make those videos all the time like Ariel does my makeup jo like Jordan does my makeup and it was just like her in her glam room like with people doing her makeup me doing my makeup and it was such premium content mm -hmm. and the Kris Jenner video was pretty good it was a little frustrating like they kept skipping steps in the makeup routine because if it was steps that Kylie Cosmetics like didn't make they didn't use anything other than Kylie Cosmetics oh, which was you, annoying were you the, really there for the steps like barely and also she started with foundation and like I really wanted to see how Kris Jenner would have done her fudge what do you mean oh she was already wearing foundation yeah got it yeah, that's always like I want to see. I want to see the goods. Yeah, I hate when it's like just my makeup and it's like they my, come in only like, my eyes. No, they literally come in with like what I wear on every day except yeah. for lipstick. So I just I really need Kylie to invest more in her YouTube channel. I know she has a studio like in her apartment. I mean, in her house, in her office, like. Please, like for us. I haven't watched a video yet. Did you watch Halloween Cookies with Stormy? Um, I did. I haven't watched that one either yet. Yeah, no, but like literally, it's funny because there's Halloween Cookies with Stormy and then like two videos back, Christmas it's Christmas cookies. vlog. So it's literally four vlogs a year. Maybe she does, it's a Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Maybe. Or maybe just what the people want are Cookies with Stormy. Like that's what tested, that's what got the highest Q score. Yeah, maybe Stormy's just a star. I mean, she is a star. They should just call her Starmy. <laughs> Oh, man. Stormy the Star. It's Starmy. Okay, I'm going to watch those. Yeah, it's a fabulous if you have like not, if you need to kill 15 minutes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always need to kill 15 minutes, but it never occurs to me to like go to my YouTube app. YouTube app is so fabulous. Quite. I watched my favorite podcast, The Morning Toast, on there. Oh, my God. They are so funny, those girls. No, those girls, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I had my, my doubts about them, just like hearing what, you know, evil people say about <laughs> them. And then it's like, I just gave the time to like listen to their show and follow them on Instagram. And it's so clear that they're really smart, nice girls who just have such good intentions. And it's just crazy to me that like people say all these terrible things about them when I've only known them to be like literally so kind, <laughs> so lovely, so smart, and just like want to make people happy and in turn have become villains. I, honestly, I think it's a really interesting, you know, sociological experiment. I agree. And is it just me or is that dog getting cuter? And is it just me or is that brunette like so fucking snatched and beautiful? And is it just me or her eyelashes looking so beautiful? Thank you. I got an eyelash lift. And honestly, like I saw your before and after pictures and I had never been interested in an eyelash lift before. 
but now I have eyelash envy. Well, let me just say, the actual experience of the procedure was so unpleasant. Like, I was regretting it so much when I was laying there. The patches that they stick in your eye and then they glue up your lashes. It's just a, it's not painful. It's just very unpleasant and an unnatural way to lay down with your like head back and your eyelashes glued. It's just very dis, what's the word? When you're, you wake up and you're so like. Disorienting. Yes, it's very disorienting. And I was really regretting it. And then when I got up and looked in the mirror, it was like the best money and the best 45 minutes I'd ever spent. I might go somewhere else because I just feel like I have a couple complaints about it. Okay. But for the most part, like my lashes, I'm, I feel like I'm the perfect candidate for a lash lift. I don't have short lashes. I have very long lashes that go straight. Yeah. So it's like I curl them so hard they never stay up. This is just basically like taking a curling iron to my lashes and it's an unbelievable experience. I highly recommend if you've been thinking about it. Okay. Good to know. I oh, and they tint them. Oh. So they just look even more pronounced. I That's think the, that last the step. process of what you just described is very similar to my eyelash tinting. Like you lay there with your head back and it's not comfortable. And a lot of times like the dye gets in your eye and like it's really fucking painful. But you're like beauty is pain and you just sit there and like you can't open your eyes. So you like kind of have a tear coming down, but you don't want to get like dye all over your face. Yes. Um, so I think I actually might be cut out for the tint. But can I say I've for actually the, I got yeah. eyelash extensions once and it wasn't nearly as annoying. Like either I didn't go to a good place or it's just like a really unpleasant experience because I've gotten eyelash extensions before and it's like it's not the best but it's not a big deal eyelash work can be unpleasant it's a very sensitive area it is and it's just it's weird. a very small hair that you're doing a lot to and it's also very weird to like be forced to keep your eyes closed do you know what I mean well yes but I'm I'm so used to it I've been dyeing my eyelashes since high school so it's like that's what that's what you get for an eyelash procedure. Yeah, it's just strange. Yeah, I can imagine. But, but it I highly really recommend. Good. It looks really good. Thank you. Okay, our next story. Exciting news, but I'm skeptical. Okay. Jamie Lynn Spears teases a Zoe 101 cast reunion. Are you ready? Ooh, I know you see me standing here. Do I look good, my dear? Do I look good today? Yeah. <laughs> if ooh, you ooh, wanna ooh. play, come and play today. Let's get away. Yeah. yeah. I will make you see all of the things that you gotta be. Believe in yourself and follow your dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claudia, that's beautiful. Wait, um, Okay, say the story and then I okay. have thoughts. So Jamie Lynn Spears is teasing a Zoe 101 cast reunion. She posted a teaser on her Instagram saying, we're back, are you ready? She also tagged her co-stars Sean Flynn, who plays Chase Matthews, Aaron Sanders, who plays Quinn Pesky, Matthew Underwood, who plays Logan Reese, and Chris Massey, who plays Michael Barrett. She I also love tagged, Chris Massey. Um, she also tagged, it's not in this article, but who is she? Uh, she's an Instagram girl. She used to date, or is dating Diplo. She's like the big... Girl, Instagram girl. What? Hold on. I have no She's idea not part of Zoe 101 at all. But she got tagged. But in she the... got tagged by Jamie Lynn Spears. Do you think it was a like a mistake? Um, no. I Chantal Jeffries. She oh. said she said, Oh, and hey at Chantal Jeffries. That is very strange. Yeah. By the way, you described her perfectly. The Instagram girl or who, who dated was maybe Diplo. dating Diplo. Yeah, she's just like always in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my she that's... is the Instagram girl. Yeah, like the one. The one and the only. Um, so I feel like the cast of Zoe 101, of all the shows that like, people like were obsessed with as a kid, is like probably the thirstiest. Like, excluding Jamie, because she's so like on another level. But like all the sub characters, they're all over my TikTok. Her little brother. Do you remember him? Yeah. He is like a disgusting TikToker. Like <laughs> Dustin. Jack Dustin, thank you. <laughs> Jackie, he's on TikTok. It's like he does like sexual pornographic TikToks. It's so concerning because like, yes, he might be 21 now, but he's always gonna be 12, like in my eyes. Right, of course. And he's like literally on TikTok with his whip and his like shirt unbuttoned. And it's like making sex. It's so disgusting. Like you have to go, guys, check out his name is Paul something. Stop. Check out his TikTok. Well, she it's didn't tag him. 
but they've all been together recently, like doing TikToks on his page, except for Jamie Lynn. Because Jamie Lynn is like so above the fray. I just want to say, when I'm speaking about the cast, I'm not referring to Jamie yeah, Lynn. okay. I'm saying all of them are so fucking thirsty. But Jamie Lynn did post this, and I just, when I went to her Instagram, I saw she posted like a nine image, image grid. grid. So like, she's serious about this. And I have Well, like, they need Zoe for the Zoe 101 reboot. I don't know. I feel like they tried to live in a post-Zoe world, and yeah. it didn't work. But I'm just really, like, if they're going to do a Zoe 101 reboot, like, I need it to be premium. I need to go back to Pepperdine University. PCA. And I need it to be beautiful, stunning, and smart. Like, if if any of this has Zoom. anything to do with Zoom, like, I will literally... I- I'll boycott. Pick it. Yeah, I agree. No, don't don't disgrace a franchise just because you want to get a reboot reboot out in quarantine. Like... Take the time, go to Pepperdine University in Malibu and recreate Pacific Coast Academy. It's worth the effort. Yeah, even if it's like, I don't know how why Zoe would be in boarding school, but whatever it is, maybe they're in college or something. No, maybe <laughs> Zoe's kids are now going to PCA because she they've heard, maybe Zoe and, okay, Zoe, Zoe and Chase ended up together. This is my clip, my call. They have kids now and their kids are like, oh, I want to go to PCA. So Zoe, the show starts with Zoe and Chase taking their kids up to PCA and then running into like all their old schoolmates who also are now dropping their kids off for the first day at PCA. Yeah, I just don't know if the ages line up because that would mean that like all of the PCA kids had like kids at 18. Oh, I guess. But no, the kids could be young. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That In order for them to be interesting, they have to be like at least 10. Maybe. Well, how, how old are, how old is Jamie Lynn? I want to say like, I'm going to say 30 because I think she's like around my age. Yeah, and like five-year-old she's kids. She's 29. Five-year-old kids don't go to boarding school. Yeah, she's 29. Shit. Okay, I mean, we have to think like how Fuller House did it. Like, what's going to bring all these kids together at the age of 30? Back to PCA. Maybe the show doesn't involve PCA, which would be terrible. Right. That's, PCA is, next to Jamie Lynn, PCA is the biggest character. You no, know, the, the, the school, I completely agree. And like the dorms, and yeah. it was so chic. And the key on the neck, like, yeah. where she, if she's not there, like, why would she be wearing a key? I yeah, just, like her house key, that's a hazard. And the, um, the, like, the scooters. Yeah, no, it needs to have the school element. So It's so valuable. Oh, maybe, maybe it's like um, a 10-year reunion special. Yeah. Like, they all go back to PCA for their 10-year reunion. I hate a reunion special. I know. Like, I want a reboot. All firing and all, all cylinders where I would want nothing at all. Um, really quickly. No pressure. Did you watch SNL? No. Uh, I watched musical performances. I watched just like a few sketches on YouTube. Um, I have to say Justin Bieber's performance of Holy was so unbelievably like moving. I never thought I would say that about a Justin Bieber performance. His vocals were incredible. I love Chance the Rapper. They both are people who are very musically talented. So it's like their performance sounded just like iTunes. It was really mm-hmm. fabulous. Justin Field felt like he was very emotional and I was like feeling it it was excellent I thought his performance of Lonely was very good and I thought Issa Rae did a good job it was a good um episode okay I'm glad I'm glad to hear it I liked his performance of Lonely because I'm just like really feeling that song except when I was watching it on SNL and he was playing Jacob Tremblay (laughs) um it just like made me really sad no the song is pathetic like it's terribly sad (laughs) No, no no it's like a sad song and I think everyone these days like sings about being lonely and like depressed and anxious and like that's like how we're all feeling um but like it was so personal emotional and raw I felt like oh I shouldn't be watching like this is yeah. too personal no but it's like everyone sings about being lonely now because I feel like it's kind of in the zeitgeist to be like open about your mental health whereas like when Justin Bieber was 12 like literally no one gave a shit if he was lonely it's like <laughs> go back to work you know <laughs> he was really like put through a tough time and and I actually feel for him like I really do yeah no I really if you wanted do. to write a song like you know, I bet this is how it started. He says, oh, I want to write a song about being lonely when he was 11 because that's how he's feeling. And the person who wrote his song said, okay, and he wrote One Less Lonely Girl. Like, the person was confused. <laughs> like, that it just like, wasn't Justin, an option. Justin, like, had this song in his diary for years and, like, now that he's finally able to do his own Whatever thing and he be wants. his own man, he's like, I'm going to give, like, my 12-year-old self. Freedom, liberation. Because I also feel like now that he's married, you know, marriage like you have someone to talk to and somebody is listening yes. I do feel like Haley is listening oh I think she listens a lot I think she's probably an amazing listener yeah I feel like this song is like more pre-Haley you know yes of course no it's literally one less lonely girl days 
And then when he was like living in that big house and like throwing eggs at people. Yeah, but that's when he was talking about like idiot kid. Yeah. That was like throwing eggs. And I, we all were watching him throwing eggs like and we were like. We're, that like, was this such is, a weird like time. We were like this is so horrible. And it was really horrible. But like nobody ever thought like maybe he's lonely. Maybe it's a cry for help. Yeah. Yeah. The egg thing was strange. Yeah. Eggs are really fucking nasty, like, especially when you're throwing them at people and things. No, it's so, like, 90s Josie Grossy that it's, you, we don't throw eggs anymore. It's so wasteful. Like, come Yeah. On. No. You can but, make a bomb frittata. But he's a different person now, so. I agree. And I don't hold people, you know, I don't hold a grudge because he threw eggs five years ago, you know? Yeah. We all do things. Okay, our next story is some really exciting news about someone who we love. Bachelorette alum Emily Maynard welcomes her fifth child a baby girl i cannot believe she keeps having babies like it's so crazy but this is what she always wanted literally when she was a bachelorette and chris harrison was like where do you see yourself in whatever five years and she's like i see myself in a minivan like truck full of kids and like her dreams are coming true and i love to i really do love to see like someone getting exactly what they've manifested right no that's what rupaul says he's like when you become the when your life becomes like what you envisioned it it's like the most powerful thing like you accomplish exactly what you set out to like have in your life and it's very powerful and i I love this for her yeah she has welcomed her fifth child and fourth with her husband tyler johnson who she married in 2014 on sunday the star shared a video from the hospital which documented the birth of the couple's baby girl um we don't have a name yet but she said welcome to our world I absolutely like there is a special place in my heart little tiny corner carved out for Emily Maynard like she far and away my favorite bachelorette like just what a a classy girl and she's one of those people who's been through like a lot of tragedy and like you just want her life to be filled with joy because like you know that tragedy where she like just had a baby and the father of her baby just died you know like i i want her to have no it wasn't even that it was that she was pregnant sorry yeah but she didn't find out until after he died she didn't know she was pregnant until after her uh fiance died oh my god i mean it's so tragic like and i I want so many blessings to her. And if this is how she, you know, wants to live her life with a million children, I think that's wonderful. I think it's wonderful and beautiful and we're really happy for her. And we'll, we'll never pass away a chance to talk about Emily Maynard on the yeah. show. And you also just don't have that many, like, celebrity socialite influencers who have five babies. It's just, like, rare, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, it's a lot of babies. It's like her and Angelina Jolie and James Vanderbeek. Like, that's it. Yeah. But, like, Kim might get there. Oh, that's true. The Kardashians have so many kids. They do have so many kids. I think it went from being like Mason to being 30 of them. I know. I think it's a good trend. I agree. Okay. Our next story is not something that you saw, but I did. And it really got me, got me shook because Billie Eilish's optical illusions shoes sparked debate and it's the dress all over oh, again. No. So okay. Billie Eilish posted on her Instagram story. Um, she was like, remember the dress, LOL. And then she's like, it's so funny. Cause I have these pair of shoes and my dad thinks they're white and pink and they're mint and white or whatever and so she's showing us them and they're literally white and pink and I guess she got a million responses we're like those are white and p- they're white and pink like but do, ju- do, do other people think that it's different um I don't know how, I really don't know how someone could here what color are those white and pink white and pink and like they're she keeps being like no you guys they're mint and showing more and like <laughs> white and pink <laughs> wait, wait Billy thinks that they're they're mint and white okay and wait you'll see it but in the next this picture this is the crazy thing about colors like, this is the crazy thing. how do I know she's, what this is green like how do we know that green is the same it's so no, crazy she's literally like going to google and showing the shoe that she bought it's mint like she bought a mint shoe it doesn't come in the white and pink thing but the way she keeps showing the shoe white and pink right Wait, what? But then look at this. Mint and white. No, that's pink and white for me. Oh, to me, I can see that one is mint and white. And it literally became this whole thing. The more she tried to... keep going. The more she tried to (laughs) This is so funny. ...prove that um, they're mint and white, the more clear it was that they're white and pink. But, like, they really are mint and white, but, like... Will you show me the original shoe that's mint and white? Yes, they are the Nike Uptempo mint and white. Hold on. This is so crazy. These color things that like trick your eyes, like the contrast really freak me out. Like it's, it's wild. Here, these are the shoe. Oh, wow. They're literally mint and white, but the way that she keeps. Okay, so now go back to her picture for a second. Okay, sorry if this is uninteresting to you guys. Like just the way that the light is makes the white, makes the mint look white. 
and the white look pink. Oh, you know what video comes out today? You know how every year for the last three years, um, Billie Eilish has done a Vanity Fair interview? Yes. It comes out today. Oh, that's exciting. I think these shoes are the best promotion for that. Because I I'm hope like, she'll discuss. I'm so, I love stuff like the dress. Like when the dress happened, that to me is like my perfect sort of well, cultural moment. Same I love with, something that brings us together. Yeah, like, uh, but also like we're divided. Right. Because it's like, I saw it as white and gold, obviously, because I can see. When you saw the dress, did you see black? White and gold. White and gold. Eventually, I was able to see it as black and blue like I could see what others were seeing but like when I see it my eyes go to white and gold mine was black and blue and like just remember like Laurel and Yanni of course <laughs> of course <laughs> who could forget Laurel and Yanni that, that no I actually think that Laurel and Yanni is crazier because um white like I could see when you adjust the contrast and maybe people who have like lighter eyes like I'm sure there is actually like a scientific explanation for why we see it the way that we see it but literally I was like oh he's saying Laurel and then like the next day I heard Yanni and I'm like someone changed the clip no I know it's, and like it's not like Laurel and Yanni are such similar, similar words no they have the all but still like it's so bizarre I love things like that like mnemonic tricks and she really it was the crazy watching her try and prove and she was like <laughs> that's literally suck my dick like these are mint and white that's so funny um Billie Eilish was also photographed uh like taking out the trash in a tank top which was like very rare for her and I saw the most disgusting article like ever being circulated it was like six times Billie Eilish ditched her baggy clothes like get the like that's so disgusting like she's a child like yeah it was really gross I saw all the commentary around the photo but I just didn't want to participate in it because she's a beautiful young woman. Right, and then it's like doing her chores. That's why. That's why she wears baggy clothes. She's helping out around the house, even though she's like the number one Grammy winner of all time. Right. Like, no, it's like I don't even take out the trash. <laughs> like I think that I'm so special. I'm like Ben, get rid of it. And like Billie Eilish takes out the trash. We could all learn a thing too from her. If Billie Eilish can take out the trash, so can you. Yeah. Sorry. I know it's not what you wanted to hear this morning, but <laughs> it's true. Okay, our fifth and final story is a little happy couple news because Zac Efron is celebrating his 33rd birthday with girlfriend Vanessa Valadares in I didn't Australia. even know he had a girlfriend. Yeah, he's dating a Vanessa. She's not the Vanessa, Ugh. but she's a Vanessa that makes him happy. And, and so for okay. that reason, I am pleased as well. He is so like off the grid. He is off he the grid. He moved to Australia. He's so and then off he had the that grid show. that he started a show about being off the grid. Yeah, and like almost died whilst leaving the grid. Yeah. Yeah, he's... um. It's not what I saw for him, you know? Yeah. At one point in the height of his movie career with like Neighbors, Greatest Showman, like I was like, he's going to be like one of the biggest movie stars in the world. And he just kind of. No, he still is. But, no, but like. He doesn't not. want the like celebrity, like the typical celebrity aspect of that. But as far as like his career trajectory, like going from being like, um, who, what was his name? Philip Carlisle to Ted Bundy. Like he's mm. on track yeah. to Link Larkin. He's, he's everything of the sort. Yeah, this actually might be maybe one of my most controversial statements, but I think that everything Zac Efron has ever done pales in comparison to his work in Hairspray. I think it's the role of a lifetime. No, I think that his role in Hairspray, like, it was the perfect role for him because Agreed. it was everything that he was so used to doing, which is High School Musical, and then, like, so, like, so... Hollywood, Queen Hollywood, Latifah. serious... He nailed it. He fucking nailed it. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this, like, I think once every six months about how the most recent, you know, revival of Hairspray starring Nikki Blonsky and Zac Efron is quite possibly the most well-cast movie on the planet. Yes, and the, but the most recent revival was Hairspray Live. Sorry, film revival. Yeah. It, it's just so sensational. Between Amanda Bynes as Peggy and Zac Efron as Link Larkin, and Queen Latifah as Motormouth Maybell. There's just so many excellent, oh, Jerry Stiller as Mr. Pinky, mm -hmm. and John Travolta, and Christopher Walken as the parents. It's just like, there's not one person I would have changed in terms of casting. I agree. I even feel that way about Hairspray Live. I think the casting was on point. I think like Hairspray just always has great casting. Yeah. But unfortunately, um, there was Hairspray Live just... It didn't cut it. It didn't cut it. When are, I wonder when, when they're going to do another one of those lives. We're really banging them out for a Can while. Can I be honest? I think never. They had Rent, I, uh, Grease, Hairspray. Yep. Sound of Music, Peter Pan, um, uh, The Wiz. The Wiz. And I think that like those lives were like the pinnacle of like everything pre-COVID. Yeah. You know, and a little unnecessary. Uh, no, it's like, it's like we like, can do this, so we will. But like no, but literally like, nobody asked for it. We could also just like Record spend all this it. time recording it and making it perfect as opposed to like making sure someone doesn't break his ankle the day before. No, it was like so unnecessarily extra. You're right. And so for that, I don't think it's going to come back. Uh, I'm okay with that. I think the lives were a moment in time. Yeah. 
And, you know, I was glad to have experienced it. Yeah, even though Grease Live was utter perfection, Julianne Huff should be so proud of herself. So should Vanessa Ann Hudgens. Her dad died the night before, and she still did it. Yeah. So th- those lives were really made for Vanessa Hudgens and no one else. No, there's a few people who, like, it was really, Thrived really made live. for. Vanessa Hudgens, Kiki Palmer, and in a lot of ways, like, Ariana Grande, like, getting to act and also, like, belt yeah. was perfect for her as well. Yeah. She played Penny Pingleton. That was good. That was good. I don't know. I was so excited for Hairspray Live and then like Zach forgot to record it. So we missed the first half and like I was and by the second half they were all out of breath. And like it was so bad that they actually like never put it on a streaming service. So like I never got to watch it. I literally had Hairspray Live like written in my planner. I was yeah, so, so excited. excited. It was like early days of Zach and I dating and like he didn't record and I was like Oh my god, this red, isn't gonna work out. Red flag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's horrible. When somebody doesn't record something for you, it's like you you're so angry. Like there's you can't go back. Like, there's nothing you could do about it. No, no, no. Especially when it's like a one night only. Yeah, one live. night only special. Yeah. One night only. One, one night. Oh, did you do a Dream Girls live? Or just a Dream Girls movie that's yeah. filmed properly and perfect. I could use another one. Yeah. So good. But, anyways, the Nobody couple was joined by a star studded group of friends. To host your snack. Wait, what are we talking about? Vanessa. Oh. So Veladaris wow. and Zach Efron. Zach Efron's Zach 33. And Vanessa. We get to say it again. Zach and Vanessa. Zach Efron's 33. Troy Bolton. How old was he when you think he played Troy Bolton? Like he 15? was at high school, uh, sophomore and junior. So like 15? 15, 16. He's been famous for half his life. That's a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, he's been through a lot. Yeah, he almost died on his off the grid thing. No, but also like personally. You know, yeah, I mean, I feel of- like ever since him and Vanessa broke up, he just hasn't been able to find a love like that. I know. You guys, go watch High School Musical. You'll never be the same. It's like, true. I go thought watch, Jackie was being dramatic. Go but watch it's... High School Musical as a 30-year-old. You'll never be the same. No, it's really good. It's so good. The it's... third one is arguably the best. You can make the argument about any of them, really, because two, there's a lot of controversy surrounding two. No, there's a lot of, like, political, <laughs> like, ness in that movie. No, here's why I think three is the best. Because two is not the best. While it was like an interesting take, they weren't in the school. And like, you got to be in high school for high school musical. And I liked the country club stuff, but it wasn't, it's a good it spin was, off, no, but it's it not. It was an excellent sequel. Yeah. But I think the third is better than the first because the third had everything the first really needed. It had, it was, the third was released in theaters. So it was like really big it Hollywood budget. Razzle dazzle. They were a little older, so they kissed. Where it's like the first movie, they didn't even kiss. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were sophomores, like inappropriate no i was doing way worse when i was a sophomore no <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> um okay before are we done with the story um yeah i mean they were with a star set group of friends at a party in byron bay as seen in photos in the daily mail um which also reported that guests included chris and liam hemsworth's dad oh Craig. Um, oh um that's weird a tennis pro a radio host oh kyle sandalands who uh, i think he hosts with kyle and jackie o Oh my God, you're our chemist. So my, <laughs> no, we support. We're Jackie O's who support. No, other for Jackie sure. But O's. like sometimes, like if she's going through something, like you'll get like the end of her press, and I'm sure she gets. <laughs> she, she gets, gets mine. Yeah, honestly, we owe her an apology. And every once in a while, I'll get like people commenting, "You're not the real Jackie O." Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my God. Yeah, I wonder if she's heard of me. Probably. Mm-hmm. Probably yeah, not. I'm going to venture and say, yeah, the girl who's disgracing her name, like <laughs> taking a dump on her Google SEO search. I think that it's definitely possible that she knows who you are. I'm sorry. Wait, so Chris and Liam Hemsworth's dad, dad Craig, was at the party. Yeah. But Chris and Liam were nowhere to be found. No. N- yeah. No, they didn't say. Interesting. Real Houses of Potomac was so boring last night. And you she know said what? It. She said it. I'm, I'm, I feel like now enough episodes have passed where I can make a royal decree about this season. Like, Not only do I feel like it's such a boring season, but I feel like it's not for lack of substance. Like there were, there was a major event that just happened. And I still feel like even the episode with the major event was a little boring. Like I just feel like something about the editing and some of the other women like is so boring. And I I hate that it has come to this. I really do. Yeah, I totally agree. I made my decision like a week ago and two weeks ago, but then last week firmed up that I'm fully team Monique. And then this week like solidified. And it's so nice when you make your decision and then like everything else that you witness just proves to you that you made the right decision and you're not like constantly trying to figure it out. Um, I think the, this episode went to show that like Monique is integral to the entertainment factor oh, 100%. of the show. Um, and every, like it just proves what we've been saying. Like I think Giselle and Robin were like so excited for a reason to 
take down Monique and now and they've all like kind of you know encouraged Candace to take this legal route and like now Candace is saying she wants Monique in jail and they're like wait Right. So let's talk about the crux was that she actually filed second degree assault charges towards Monique last night. Monique on her Twitter, because Monique wasn't even in the episode, posted an email of the letter, uh, posted a screenshot of the email she got from uh, Candace's attorneys and was really trying to insinuate that Monique was um, felt like Candace was using this experience to get money from Monique. And the email was like, if you do not respond, we'll file a class action lawsuit, which means like getting money. Um, And Monique really felt like this is Candace was not really looking for justice or trying to get Monique to go to jail. Like, in the end, she wanted to get paid out by Monique, which, honestly, I never thought of, but kind of makes sense. Yeah. I That is so crazy to me. Like, when the fight first went down, we're like, oh, my gosh, okay, this is crazy. Like, everyone, let's take a step back, reevaluate. And now it's like, you're really going to court, like, over some hair pulling? No. And, and, and her, like, waking up every morning, like, with trauma, I'm... I'm I can't. No, and what Monique said, I think maybe she said it on Twitter. It's like, it, a court, Monique feels it was not second degree assault because they were both fighting with each other. And maybe if you slow it down, you could argue that, yes, Monique started at first, but they were hitting each other. Candace threw a glass. So, like, technically, they both have grounds to stand on legally. Right. And also, if this did go to court, I'm sure they had the footage and they replayed it. And maybe they didn't um, have the TikTok that I saw, which <laughs> is that Candace put her hands on Monique first. Right. Um, and that's so, the, that's really what's so crazy about the whole thing is the women are talking as if like Monique was so clearly in the wrong. But like when you she was flipping her hair, which isn't like a the right thing to do. But Candace was being annoying. But Candace touched Monique's body first. And that's what Ashley was saying. She was like, you like Ashley's an amazing friend. I, I fucking agree. love her. The fact that Candace can't even on the smallest level acknowledge her part in this, like as if literally this just happened to her and fell in her lap. Ashley was like, you were like antagonizing her and you were provoking her. Like, can't you just at least own that? Like, let's say we all agree Monique is wrong, but like you're not going to own any part, any of your part in this. Like to act like this whole thing just happened to her. I just I find her insufferable. I really do. And I just feel like this whole saga is part of the reason why she's the, like the worst housewife because to be honest in the beginning it was so clearly like she was the victim and now I just I, I can't stand her again I, I can't stand her and like for her to for her when they got into their fight like Candace was you know she was dragging me money drag me what are you gonna do, drag me and then so she they get gets into the dragged. fight and then she gets dragged <laughs> and then her now her approach is like crying PTSD victim victim and it's like either like talk the talk and walk the walk but like to go from being like you're right so strong drag me Monique and she then she gets her hair pulled and now she's like in court yeah crying with the but if you want to be strong before be strong after yeah no that's a very good point she's very inconsistent yeah I just I really can't stand her and you know what like I don't like the way Chris spoke to her and when he was like shut up shut up but like I know what he was saying he's like literally you're in the right like you're digging your grave when you were one we were digging Monique's right and when she said the comment to Ashley about like not for long it's like oh no oh, oh that's what it now was we're she's all, so nasty right, now we're all reminded as to why you got your hair pulled in yeah. the first place no no when she said that and like Ashley really was not coming from Ashley was being like she a, wasn't being nasty she wasn't she was just having genuine conversation and not everyone is ever going to agree on stuff but but when you talk about it like civil human beings it's like a it's a lovely way to to, to have a conversation and she didn't come out you know angry or anything and Candace just like like totally dismissed her yeah. when she had a valid concern and she raised it in a very normal, calm way. And Ashley was like the only one who was just going to mention the other side of things mm-hmm. where it's like, it's a table of everyone just like affirming what the other thinks. And like, ultimately that's not productive because there's two people in this situation yeah. and two sides that need to reconcile. I also have a lot of respect for Karen. I think she's in a much more difficult place than anyone else because Ashley, like I think you know, is happy to have a chance to get back at Candace for yes. all of the things that she's done. And, and you know, a- Ashley, like, knows Candace, so she's less inclined to, like, believe her victimhood. Yes, and Ashley and Monique have a good friendship, and Monique had Ashley's back last season because we don't know if she had that footage in her house right. of Michael, but, like, she... Right. I, I, it felt like she had Ashley's back, so this is an easy choice for Ashley to have Monique's back. For Karen, I, she, I think her two closest friends in the group are Monique and Candace and she is 
in the middle and the fact that like some of the women won't let her be in the middle and they're forcing her to take a side like I think that 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 they are wrong in that situation and being in the middle like Karen said it's the absolute worst place to be but the fact that Candace thinks that because Karen's in the middle she's prioritizing Monique's feelings is exactly why Candace can't see like the truth also really quickly about footage did you see that video that went viral this week a reddit user who was watching old episodes yes. of Potomac realized um, in the very background of like a major scene, I guess no one was paying attention at the time to what was going on in the background, but Michael is caught fondling. I think it was a producer or like yeah. a, a passerby. No, it looked like someone who was working on the show because I think he was wearing a headset. Right. Um, which just goes to prove pretty much everything that um, has been going on the last few seasons. It was just a crazy, if you're interested, like just search on Twitter or on Reddit for the video. It's wild. Yeah, it's really wild. The only other thing I wanted to talk about from the episode was, um, can't, uh, no, Wendy's party. party. I found all the like Nigerian culture stuff to be so interesting. I love people who go on TV and like are so proud of their culture and just like want to teach the world about like Igbo and what, and like the headdresses. I just loved it. And I thought it was fabulous. And it was actually a wonderful party. Like, um, very well put together. I think whoever did the uh, decor did a good job. The food looked delicious too. The food looked delicious. Um, I agree. I love learning about other people's cultures on television and I thought it was really beautiful to see. She has such a, I mean, the stuff with her in-laws is it's crazy upsetting, but that her like, core family, she has such a beautiful family. Oh, agreed. And it seems as though she has a really wonderful marriage. And yeah. It, it's, it's lovely to watch. What's so crazy about her in-law situation is like, it's not like, you know, can't uh, it's not like Wendy is some you know like vagrant like right. she's literally so accomplished she has four degrees she's an amazing mother she's a political analyst she's a professor and her husband's family like doesn't like her like what's that to like yeah she's incredibly accomplished she's the type of woman you hope your son marries right she's not like you know I think that's what makes it so weird extra sad for them too yeah you know yeah I actually really um, watch, like, enjoy watching her home scenes because I think her she's a really good husband and her kids are like very cute and very well behaved and just like seeing her husband like get the kids dressed was just like wow that's nice like you don't really see that in Housewives yeah I thought it was cute and all the kids wearing pink were super cute and also Robin Dixon getting to the party early before Wendy was so funny um and Robin Dixon in the rotate dress that yes. Erica Jane and Lisa Rinna also wore but as Andy pointed out on Watch What Happens Live I believe that Robin's scene was filmed before that Beverly Hills scene oh. so Robin is the trendsetter here and I just want to say I think that for every event the women of Potomac should be given a color um because they works. looked wonderful it works they were they actually all looked amazing and then they also looked amazing together and I think that some sort of structure like that even also at the wine tasting before it went south like everyone, everyone had like a good. wine tasting vibe and looked really good but like it was like browns but like the dinner at the lake house just not it but it was also a confusing lake house I, honestly i give them oh, yeah no it a was. pass for that yeah um the fine the other thing i wanted to say oh robin dixon's hat company yeah yeah i just feel <laughs> like we should leave it at that you know <laughs> yeah she like in so many ways she makes me sad you know <laughs> well um they look comfortable and and she made 10 grand and I hope that she does well like I I really do yeah I just feel like I want to get in there and like help her with her finances you know what I mean not that I know anything about finances but she's on tv like she sh like yeah how come no here's the thing how come we didn't know she had a hat company before right how come she like is making literally making her own hats and, and I'm not gonna, they do look really comfortable and I could see them being like really popular mm -hmm. and she's never once promoted them. I've never heard of embellished before on the show, right. but I've heard of LaDom 30,000 times. Like 100%. that's how you brand yourself. And I would bet you LaDom is selling way more units than the hats are because I literally never even heard of that. Like if she and Andy on Watch Heaven's Live was like, can you send me a hat? She was like, you want one? Like you should be sending everyone hats. Like everyone, this business yeah. actually could be something because first of all, housewife hat. businesses are very successful. And like hats are a great thing. No housewife is in the hat industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, the hats look like really nice hats and it's hard to find a nice hat sometimes. I agree. And if she was wearing the hats in every episode, every time they went somewhere, every time the, uh, someone had a party, you know, you get the hat. Uh, embroidered. Custom, like she could be doing so she much. She could be doing so much and it's wasting the opportunity. Like I think Kyle Richards might have sold more agency hats. Yeah, 100%. Than Robin and her hat company. And it's a waste of an opportunity. And, and I like the name Embellished. No, it was like all there. But just to hear about it for the first time, it's like. In season Robin, five. Robin has a hat company. No, it seemed so weird, like and off. Just she she could be doing so much more. Yeah. So that that's my critique. Um, other than that, like I said, it was a boring episode. But um, 
I feel like we made it fun. We did make it fun. We need Monique back. I love her so much. Me too. And this has just gotten like Out of so control. off track. Yeah. We have The Bachelorette tonight, right? Monday? Yes, it's The Bachelorette. <sighs> wow. Okay. After Dale. I can't believe it's literally already been a week since the last one. You know? I know. Our recap segment, After Dale, will be live tomorrow where and we recap what might happen after Dale. And the, the official TNN Bachelor After Show slash recap show is The Snatchler. The subscribe Snatch to it. Lore. Subscribe to it anywhere you get your podcasts, like iTunes or Spotify. Um, she's doing episodes every week. There's one last week if you want to catch up. And she's the T. She really does. Like, she knows everything. She knows everything. And then also, like, when you listen, you get to, like, know more about The Snitch. And she's that's... so complex. That's why I listen, really. Yeah. It's just, like, full of snitch tea. Yeah, it's... Heavy. It's such tea. Um, and that's our show. And then also Theo's podcast is dropping soon, so stay tuned for yeah. that. Here's a little sneak peek. <laughs> no, in that first episode, we got a preview when he was like, <laughs> I was like, no. no. And then he said, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. It's, it's really incredible. It'll have you in your feelings. So just make sure you're following him on Instagram, Pops With No Job. That is our show. And if I may close it out, I think you can. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every morning, Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We are also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places wherever you listen to podcasts. Find us, the Morning Toast, and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We hope you have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow for Tuesday's episode. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.